the gospel the gospel of john chapter 9 and thank you so very much for reading the scripture you've been multitasking ah you're a busy woman i appreciate you reading it i will be reading from the new king james version john chapter 9 i will read the first two verses for now john chapter 9 it says now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who sinned, his parents or he himself? that he was born blind. Our message this evening is entitled, Whose Fault Is It? Whose Fault Is It? Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, I invite you once more this evening as we send away the Sabbath. Thank you for abiding with us all day, but just one more time, Heavenly Father, we wish to dive into the word of scripture as written in the book of chapter nine. You literally enacted this scene over 2000 years ago. You know exactly how it happened. And I pray that you would download that image that happened way far years from us, 2000 years ago, download it into our spirit so that we may understand your works even at this hour 2000 years later thank you heavenly father for making us our children abide with us in jesus name amen i noticed the special feature that uh, today i'm not sure if it was a coincidence or that it was planned but the special feature was literally in line with the message that uh, i'm presenting today uh, the special feature featured a a blind man, a blind man. And then and I just want to bring context and background in here. I was reading this chapter and I was curious why the disciples of Jesus, James, John, uh, Matthew, and them would ask this question, hmm? would ask this question, Rabbi, who sinned? Hmm? Who sinned? Is it this man? Huh? Did he sin or did his parents sin? We want to know because see, as we were taught growing up, we've read the good book. We, 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 we've been good students. We've gone to the synagogue day after day after day. We've done these things and we've read in the book of Exodus that it says, I am a jealous God that I visit the sins of their parents onto their children, even up to the fourth generation of those who hate me. So it must be it must be they thought in their head that someone in here must have sinned either the parents mm, or the person themselves it begs the question when did this person really have time to do the sinning because in in the preamble of this text it says a man who was blind when from birth so they are suggesting that somewhere before he was born in the time he was born this guy sinned well let's say he sinned hmm, in the womb of his mother how ironic and i'm sure this question bothered them that's why they asked it to jesus see jesus must know because he is a prophet he must know who sinned who sinned that this man this man was born blind. Oftentimes, even, uh, even in our daily lives, for example, when we deal with insurance, uh, I don't know if some of you have dealt with car insurances, yeah, insurance companies from different states. For example, in Michigan, they call it a no-fault state. What is a no-fault state? When an accident happens, no one is at fault. Everybody goes to their various insurance companies to claim what is theirs. In Indiana, however, here they assign fault. They assign fault when there's an accident. They want to know whose fault it is that the accident happened. So if driver A rear-ended driver B, the fault would be put on driver A for causing an accident. Why do we do that? 
Why do we do that? Because we believe every action has a consequence. We believe that every action has a consequence. And that bad decision, a bad decision caused by driver A to rear end driver B puts them at fault. That's why they get to pay fines. And the disciples were thinking in the same lines. They were thinking in the same lines that because this man is blind, it must be a sin coming from way back when. Perhaps his parents didn't get married the right way. Perhaps his parents did something against God. That is why this man must have been born blind. But I love what Jesus says in verse three, as Jesus says, and I love this if you don't, if you miss anything else tonight or what I'm gonna say, I pray you keep verse three. And Jesus says, Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, huh? nor this man nor his parents sinned. Well, Jesus, well, if, this man did not sin. Well, if his parents did not sin, then tell us why is he born blind? Why is he suffering in the way he is? Why are things happening to him like this? And Jesus said, huh? And Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. There goes your answer. So that the works of God may be revealed in him so that the works of God may be revealed, may be made manifest in him. You didn't catch that. So that the works of God might be made manifest in him. Oftentimes we've said things, oftentimes we've done things, and oftentimes We've thought things, we've said, oh, look at so-and-so's children, so-and-so's children, they are so reckless. Look at them, they are not well-behaved at all. It must be, therefore, that they were brought up in a bad home. Hmm, I don't know. I'd be questioning that. Look at him. He failed out of school. He must not have worked hard. He should have worked harder. It would have been better for him. Look at so-and-so. Look at their destitute situation. Look at the diseases going through because he was not chased. But Jesus says in verse 3, it is not everything. It is not everything that you're thinking. Not everything that happens to you happens because you did something. It's not everything that happens. The same is true. Sometimes we give ourselves credit for things. Sometimes we assign faults. And sometimes huh, we give ourselves credit because I worked so hard. I graduated with the summa cum laude. Huh? I worked so hard. That is why I would hesitate. I would hesitate to give myself all that credit. Oh, it is because I did this and that. That is why my business, eh, my business excels. I would not say that very quickly. My children are healthy. Yes, they are. But I would not necessarily give myself all the credit. I do this, that, and the third. Giving yourself credit, it is not 100% what you did. I'm sorry to burst your bubbles, some of you. Jesus says, so that the works of God may be made manifest. That the works of God might be made manifest in his life. See, the disciples were puzzled at this. We've learned all this time. We've learned in the synagogues that all things only happen at the Yes, sometimes they happen that way. But there's also another perspective. There's another perspective that you could consider. And this is why Jesus said, I tell you this day, I tell you this day, this man did not sin. His parents did not sin either. But all these things happen because 
because God wanted to show himself mighty. God wanted to show himself mighty. And I thought about this. I said, hmm, isn't this ironic? Isn't this ironic? That sometimes I really think highly of myself or sometimes I think lowly of myself. But I don't control everything. I don't control everything. And Jesus was, was, was performing this, uh, this miracle. Allow me to backtrack just a little bit. Allow me to backtrack just a little bit. You see, in verse 1, it says, now Jesus was passing by. Hmm? Jesus was passing by, going somewhere. Hmm? He was going somewhere as it was Jesus' custom. Every time he was on the way to somewhere else, every time he was going to another place. Remember that one time he was going to Jairus' house when the woman with the issue of, of blood touched the hem of his garment. He was on his way to somewhere else. Remember the one time I believe Jesus was going to Jericho and blind but mares called out to him and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Heal me so that I may also receive sight. Jesus was on the way to somewhere else. And here in verse 9, in chapter, in chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Jesus was passing by, suggesting that he was on his way to somewhere else. That this man's healing was not his destination. Even tonight, ladies and ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is on the way to somewhere else. The sun is going down and he's out ushering out a blessing. I pray and confer a blessing on you that even as he passes by via this Zoom airwaves, that prayer request you've been, you've been holding on to is taking days and days. I pray that it come your way because Jesus is on the way to somewhere else. And another significant thing I noticed about, I noticed about this, this 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 healing that happened here is that oftentimes oftentimes when people get a miracle it is because they have asked god to do something for them i am sick so i will pray to god help me i am sick so i will, uh, I will reach out god i'm suffering help me but in this case this blind man did not reach out to Jesus to say, Jesus, heal me. No, Jesus went to this man. Jesus himself went to him even without asking. So I'm praying this evening, this evening, that even those prayer requests that you've not yet, you've not yet made to God, may he consider them. May he see you where you're desperate the most. May he come to you even before you ask. May he look at your situation and sympathize with you and come your way. May he take care of that one thing, that one thing you never tell anybody about. May he minister to you even like that. And may he also take care of the most obvious thing that everybody looks and say, this man was born blind. Everybody, oh, we know that one. Mm, he was born blind. What else can he do? He's a blind man. And that thing, may God take care of it even in your life. And, 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 and Jesus, I'm back to where I was. I'm back to where I was, uh, where I was talking about these things happen because, because these things happen so that the glory of God could be shown in their lives. And I wondered, I'm like, really, God? Really, God? It must be that you really take time. Hmm? You must really take time to see what is happening with your children. This guy was caught unaware. He didn't even know his healing was happening. It was going to happen that night. That day, I don't know if it was morning or or, or 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 night, but the healing took place anyway. But I also noticed that when you read this whole story to the very end, when you read it, after this man was healed, there was a dispute that grew. There was a dispute that came through whether he was healed 
or not healed or who healed him or how he healed him, whether it was on the Sabbath, whether it was lawful. There was a whole dispute of things that happened. That happened. His healing caused, caused a fracas in the society about the authority of Jesus. It caused a whole, uh, a whole scene. Ah, by the way, did you know that this guy, after being healed, he was excommunicated from church? Imagine receiving a miracle in your local church. Ah, your local church decides to censure you. You would feel some type of way. This is exactly what happened to him. But I love what he did. What I love what he did. Because elsewhere, elsewhere, he gives a testimony of his life. And he says, look, you may, you may talk about this guy as a sinner. You may talk about him whatever, which way. All I know is that I was blind. But now I see you can talk the way you want to talk. But I was blind, but now I see. And when God has come through for you, when God has come through for you, you and also you, may you make sure to speak your testimony to the whole world so that everybody who cares to hear may hear your testimony because God came through for you. And I wondered why would God, eh, why would God himself, hmm, why, why would he come to this man 20, 25 years and all that? I want to believe he was probably in his 20s. That's to be generous. I don't know. A man is what, anywhere from 18 years and older? I was, he led him, I'm like, why didn't you come sooner, God? Why didn't you come sooner? And then and then when he gave the answer to make my works manifest in his life, I started to think about my own life. And I said, how would I know that God is Jehovah, Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals me if I didn't get sick? How would I know that God heals the sick if I never got sick before? How would I know that Jehovah is Jehovah Jireh, my banner of victory, if he never delivered me from a war before? How would I know that he is Jehovah Shalom, the God, my peace? How would I know that he gives me peace? If I was never in any kind of turmoil, how would I know that he is Jehovah Ishmael, the God who hears me when I cry, the God who hears me when I cry to him? How would I know he was that God uh, if he never if he never put me in a situation where he could deliver me. So I stopped by this evening to remind you, because you know these things, I stopped by these airwaves this evening to remind you that God is doing a beautiful work in you. God is accomplishing. He is making perfect all the things he said concerning you before you're born. So you might be a single mother and you're telling yourself, I did not sign up for this. I got married the right way and therefore things should... You are now a single mother and you don't know how to navigate this life. But God is saying, my child, my child, stay put. You're in this position. You're in this position so that God might show his might so that God might show his working in you. God is looking out to say, my daughter, stay put. My son, stay put. Things are up, but I will come through strong for you. And so when God does come through strong for you, when he finally comes through for you, that your testimony, tell it on the rooftop. Tell them how you were depressed once and God delivered you from deep depression and that you don't care what who says or what they say. It is because Jehovah is Jehovah Rophe who heals diseases, including depression. It could be because you are addicted to something or some stuff you don't want to disclose. But eventually God will come to deliver you. And when he delivers you, make sure you say your testimony to the rooftops. And eventually, 
when we've all been delivered, we've all been delivered from sin. May we all rejoice in our fathers, in our father's kingdom. In closing, I'm going to pray, Spirit of the living God, Thank you for teaching us this day, this evening, from the book of John, chapter 9. Heavenly Father, you have taught us that the things that happen to us in our lives, they are not always things we control. They are not always things that we have a say in, but sometimes they are things that you orchestrate so that your will may be shown powerful in our lives. So the things that we think are impossible become possible to strengthen our faith also for a day that would be challenging. Heavenly Father, I pray for every soul that's logged in onto this prayer prayer line, this Zoom line. I pray that you touch them at their point of need, their purposes in their hearts to send down the Sabbath hours with scripture for this reason heavenly father huh reach out to them bless them in a special way and for the organizers of, of of azana may you cause them to grow from strength to strength and may they never be wanting in your kingdom and these things that they're doing here on earth remember them my father in your kingdom thank you for listening to this prayer in jesus name amen Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that uh, message, Sister Martha. Uh, we will have our closing song. And following the closing song, um, I guess we've already said the closing prayer. So we'll just have our um, closing remarks after the closing song. <laughs>